Welcome back to Weekend Express. My name is Zinze Kibi Kudli. Just joining us, here is a recap of our top developing story at this hour, where at least two people have been confirmed dead after a five-story building collapsed in Huruma, Nairobi last night. Three others are being treated in hospital. Rescue efforts are under, under the way. We know both the NYS as well as the Red Cross have been trying to, as much as possible, get people who are stuck in the rebels. We're still not sure how many people are trapped as of this time, but our reporter Caroline B tells us the efforts are still ongoing electricity within and around the area has been shut down. Of course, we'll be trying to get you more information as she's collecting as much as she can to bring us more updates on this story. Now, onto a conversation that I promised you earlier in regards to what young people in Kenya like and dislike. There was, this was a research that was conducted by Hola. Here's a few of the graphics that are about to come up in your screen to give you an idea of what the top Kenyan youth like and disagree or the dislike in Kenya. As you can see, a comfortable life and a um, good family is what tops the likes of what Kenyan youth consider to be top for them. Whereas fear of cancer, HIV, as well as death seems to be the biggest fear the Kenyan youth have. This is, of course, be conducted between those who are aged between 26 and 30. But take a look at this other one, which gives us more details now of a bigger demographic of around um, 20 to 30-year-olds. 68% have medical insurance. This is from the people um, that were, were taken part of the research by Hola, where around 38 others have a stable income and 36% would rather get sexual advice from their friends rather than their family members. And 53% have said that they've rather had their first alcoholic drink by the time they were 20 years old. But take a look at this one. Given um, the income or rather the unemployment rate in Kenya, Kenya youth are increasingly becoming more entrepreneurial. This is another research that was conducted by Pew, which is about to come on your screens right now, in regards to if Kenyans or young people wanted to move from the country and money was not an issue. On the African continent, Ghana stands at about 70, 75%, Nigeria 74%, but Kenya stands at 54%. Those are citizens who are willing to move from the current country if money and opportunity was not a problem. In studio here with me to help us um, really demystify and talk about this issue as young people here in Kenya, I have Stephen Machau, who is a digital strategist, and closer to him is Eugene Mchai, who is a former student leader at Moi University and the author of the book Master Your Own Destiny. Gentlemen, it's so good to have you this morning. Thank you so much. Uh, let me begin with um, Stephen. Were you shocked, or now that we have shared that with you, given the fact if money was not a problem, if opportunity was not a problem, would you be part of the 54% of Kenyans, young Kenyans, who would rather want to live their life out of Kenya? Um, one thing I, I recognize and I agree with in, the, in that uh, research is uh, young people have a strong sense of, uh, of belonging. Mm -hmm. They have a strong sense of identity. They like Kenya. And um, this uh, confirms another research that was done by British Council. Mm -hmm. It's known as Next Generation Kenya. Mm. And it found that 86% uh, of young Kenyans are highly, um, are highly, uh, they, they, they value identity and heritage. And they would rather stay in the country uh, if all things were, or if, if all factors were, were, were constant. Mm -hmm. and, and these are things like, um, if they had a job, if they had uh, equal opportunity, if they had um, an equal chance to play in the space. Uh, the other bit is um, you find like Africa is the youngest continent uh, in the world. And Kenya being at the heart of tech, uh, technology development, Kenya being at the heart of uh, uh, entrepreneurial uh, advancement, where else would you want to go as a young Kenyan? EG, uh, sorry, not EG, Stephen, you're telling me if today you had the opportunity to live in a different place, e.g. London, and money or opportunity was not a problem, you'd stay in Kenya? I would still choose Kenya. I would still choose Kenya. Mm -hmm. But then we, we, we're going to highlight the, the fears that kind of uh, neutralize this deep urge. Mm -hmm. Eugene, jump into the conversation. If you were given opportunity today mm -hmm. and money uh, was that an issue? Yes. Would you still stick in Kenya as a young person? Yes, I would. I would just definitely just visit, uh, you said London, <laughs> just visit London and come back to Kenya. Right. Because uh, I believe there are so many opportunities in Kenya. 
Despite the ongoing graph that we're seeing, youth unemployment increasing, yes. etc. No, it is not a matter of the despite. In fact, those are the reasons why I would, uh, th that those are some of the reasons why I would like to, to be in Kenya. Saudi Sol seeing that uh, they would like to die, uh, to live and die in Africa. I would like to do it in Kenya. For that you. is my pride. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but the other thing that was a bit shocking is, and the fact that Eugene, you're also into business, is that quite a number of Kenyans are becoming more entrepreneurial. Yes. On the ground, when you get to interact with young people within your age demographic, is that what you see? Are young Kenyans becoming more entrepreneurial yes, yes. And rather than seeking employment? Yes. More young people are getting out of the idea that they must be employed. They must wait for career jobs for them to be able to be powerful in the society, for them to be able to run families. And so uh, more young people have become cautious of what they can do with their money and with the opportunities around. More young people are getting to entrepreneurship because they can really manage, even if it is in the micro sector, they can really manage with the little resources and make them big. And that is how they're growing. Mm -hmm. It is very, very Stephen, do you agree? Yes. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and, and these, um, you, you, you might have seen uh, the, growing, um, the growing number of stalls in, in the city or any other upcoming town. Uh, you, you can also uh, check the number of people who are doing supplies in agriculture, uh, I, I mean agricultural produce. Uh, th these are young people who, who've seen that, well, the, the space is not, or the, uh, the, 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 the ground is not level for us. Right. Right? So it's, it's, it's the high time we take that step of faith and get into what will design or what will help us see beyond, uh, beyond the challenges. And, and this, this is where I normally say we need, um, we need people or we need uh, systems or structures that are able to offer um, this growing number of young entrepreneurs a platform, a platform to not just look at, um, at young people as a, as, a, as a challenge, but see them as, a, as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And this, this ties well with uh, what David Bloom uh, de de uh, described as a demo demographic dividend. It's, it's, a huge, um, it's, a, it's a huge population that is able to, uh, to positively contribute to the welfare of the country. But then it also poses a threat, if not harnessed. And, and, and that's, that's the delicate balance that um, that, that, that uh, our policymakers need to recognize. Because then it, it be, we as young people could then turn out to be a ticking bomb. E exactly, exactly. And, and, and I think what our leaders have not recognized is the potential or the level, um, the level of uh, growth that this country can, uh, can, can gain uh, just by harnessing, even if it's just 10% of the, of the, of the population, of the, of the youth population. And, and by this... Uh, I'm looking at aspects of if you're able to give a young person quality education, giving them skills that are relevant to the 21st century, skills that are relevant to what, uh, to what the world needs. The fact that we are highly connected and um, the fact that we are able to s look at opportunities globally from a local, uh, from a, from, from a local lens, it means there's something unique about young Kenyans. And, and, and this, is where, um, this is where interventions need to, uh, need to come in place. Within your social circles of, of your friends, Stephen, when you're having your coffee or your lunch, do young people, would rather young people, especially within your friends, would they rather be in employment or do their own business, given the nature of our economy here in Kenya? Um, I would say um, it's 50-50. It's 50-50. 50-50 because um, we have jobs that are well-paying right. in this country. But then, and, and I think this is a joke that has been there for a long time, uh, is you no longer need higher education, you only need higher connections mm. to get a more stable job, a, a job that you're, that, that you're deserving in terms of the skills that you, the, 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 in terms of your level of education. So high, high connections or higher connections come, come, come before higher education. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell you? It tells you even if someone would go to the highest level of education, as, 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 as at now, 
their chan chances are high that they'll never get a job that that is equal, that matches the experience that they have, that matches the level of education that they have. On the other side, when you talk of an or when you talk of entrepreneurship, um, I think we've been doing it wrong in the country, mm -hmm. and especially when you talk of young entrepreneurs. Because for me, I, I, I actually don't see the sense in. Um, in, in, in just, um, and, and, and let me take an example of how, uh, how like some of the funds, some of the government's funds are, are distributed. Let's say, let's give the, the example of Youth Fund. You find a group of young people who are trying to build, uh, to build something in a, in, a, in, a, in a village A, and then you come and give them like 50,000. 50,000 to me, um, and you're giving to a, to a group of uh, like 10 young people, chances are high that by the time they bootstrap and they make something substantial out of this 50,000, it will take way, way, way longer, as opposed to a moment where they would look at highly potential idea or highly potential uh, youth group. Probably they have, they have, they have, a, they have a business uh, that, that has the potential of having um, probably 10 million revenue mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in, in two months or in three months. Uh, and, look at it and say, okay, fine, we understand that you have a potential of getting 10 million in two months. Uh, why can't we put probably uh, 5 million investment into this one business and then help you by bringing in um, uh, support structures which would help you generate market demand, support structures which would enable you get uh, access to more markets, right. which would enable you to access the right technology, which would enable you to... Um, get uh, the right spaces for more, more financing as, as they bootstrap. The point is, and, and this has been happening in, in the European countries, they, it pays to put more investment in one company that, is, that has the potential, the ability of generating more revenue, mm -hmm. as opposed to distributing uh, these finances to a wider, uh, wider group of uh, youth groups or a wider group of, uh, of, 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 of companies, which at the end of the day, will, they'll, just, they'll just keep on struggling because you're, you're, you're only giving them uh, money for survival. Eugene, do you agree now that you are a CEO? Do you agree that young people are not doing business the right way? Given uh, the fact that majority, uh, according to the research, are now looking <coughs> towards becoming more entrepreneurial. Yes. Now, the reality of the matter is more young people are uh, opening up to the fact that uh, they can have the power within them. And they have the power within their hands to do business, to get empowerment, to get into leadership. So the only thing that we might say is, uh, as someone says, that as young people, we have a lot of time to make mistakes. So that by the time we get old, we are able to, to do things the right way. So I think uh, young people might be doing things the wrong way but it is not wrong so long as it is having good results. For me, it is just a learning process. Learning comes with failure. Learning comes with uh, having so many problems here and there, having hitches here and there. But again, it is a learning process. Mm. It is meant to give good results. So as many mistakes as we should make, let us make as many mistakes as, as is possible. So that we'll be able to be successful in future. Eugene, for you, what is more important for you in, in life as a young person in this day and age? For me, is to be able to, to be a role model. That's what's that, more important. That is very important to me. It right. is for me to be able to have uh, my young ones or uh, my family look up to me, to be able to have my future children look up to me. And your to biggest have fear? my friends, to have uh, neighbors, to have the country look at me and say that we have this son from this land. And your biggest fear? My biggest fear is uh, probably not, not working. Not working? Yes, not okay. working. Okay, Stephen, what yes, about I you? Because I will not be, I will not be an inspiration to anyone. So if I'm not an inspiration to anyone, then that is my greatest fear, mm -hmm. yes. Stephen, what about for you? Your, your, um, your biggest likes, or rather what for you is priority as a young person? The research say that good family and a comfortable life is key. Um, but as Stephen, for you, what is um, priority and of course your biggest fear? Um, I, I think my biggest priority is, uh, is, 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 is living in an ecosystem that is able to, um, to have substantial, or, I mean, a good life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I look at it this way. Um, if, 
if only the people within my circle or the people uh, in my neighborhood are able to, uh, to, to, access their daily, uh, to access their daily bread or access um, what is critical for their life, I, I think for me I would be so comfortable because there's no need of I as a person living um, or having, having, having what, what I need in, in life, whereas the people around me are not getting that. And that, that goes to the, to, to the fears. Um, we at a point, and, and, and this, is, uh, this is, a, uh, is, a, is a national concern, uh, where we are, we are saying um, the state of the next generation is, uh, is at stake. And, and, and you can, you can, we, I can confidently uh, point out to like the NYC, uh, NYS scandal and um, other, other, other scandals in, in, in different uh, state institutions. Uh, when I look at the level of theft, the level of uh, public uh, looting, it, it puts me in, in, in a place where, where, I, where I ask myself, what's, what's the space for the next generation? What, is, what will be left out for uh, these young people to, uh, you, you, you know, you know uh, what will they be proud of? Mm -hmm. Will they ever sit down and say that our fathers, that our mothers, that our leaders who were are, who are there at that point did all they could to safeguard the, the, the welfare of the, of the future? And it goes deeper into looking at the effects that, that it has on us right now. Because when you, when you talk of corruption, it, it affects your education, the kind of skills that you're getting, right? You get to a school, you get to an institution, you're not able, you, you're not able to get the, um, uh, the, 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 the skills that you deserve, the number of uh, contact, I mean, the number of hours that you're in contact with your lecturer, they're, 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 they're reducing because people want to jump from one university to another. Lecturers want to jump from one university to another. We had their the, the strike the other day. How, how long did, did the students stay at home? Almost, I think it was two months old. Yeah, two months old. Two months. Yeah, almost two months. So, so the point is, and, and, and what, I, what I look at uh, as a major concern for the future is the fact that we are yet not, uh, we are not yet accountable, we are not yet, uh, um, making the substantial steps that mm. needs to be done or the, 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 the investment that, that needs to be done for us to secure a safe and um, a safe and, and a more promising future for, for our young people. Let me ask you, Chin, for you, um, what is your best mode of investment and, and, and your savings? The reason why I ask that is because that same Holla research says that gambling remains the key recreational activity for Kenyans as Kenyan youth at 37% admitting to gambling using it to acquire more money. Yeah. Eugene? It is just a trial. You see, uh, most people are allied to this fallacy that uh, you can gamble, make more money, but you realize that the more you gamble, the more you become a slave of uh, gambling. Mm -hmm. uh, that aside, my best method of investing, or at least having uh, resources saved, or at least uh, being accountable for my resources, is actually to invest in, say, a business, either mine or someone else's, and then also reinvest. So if I get more profits, then that means I'll make more investments with myself and also with other people. That is the best way to create security. Well, um, the, the, this specific color research goes on to say that virtual money accounts um, compared to circles and chamas are the most popular mode of savings for young people. Stephen, do you agree with that? With, with, for yourself and also for the young people around you, their modes of investing, if they even do invest in the first place. Joke is that a lot of young people especially our generations, not only in Kenya, but globally. It, it was hilarious because it was, it, it's a tweet that I saw that said that young people need to stop buying avocados and buy houses. <laughs> 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 but Stephen, let me get back to you. Um, your mode of, of, of um, saving, and do you agree that does Chamas do it for you? Is it mobile banking? Is it circles? And even for your friends within your circles? Uh, I, I think one, one, one thing that I've stood out is, uh, Chamas are strong. Chamas are, uh, have have a way of making you feel uh, one a, a, a bit at home because you 
the moment you agree on a figure that you're going to contribute on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis, um, it puts you it puts you in a in a, in a relaxed investment uh, platform. But then we're also seeing, uh, especially those young entrepreneurs who are able to uh, get more income, um, they're investing in things like bonds. Uh, they're investing in uh, in shares, so I think it all depends on the stage you are in in life, in terms of financial, uh, in terms of financial development, or in, ter in terms of financial capability. Um, but that said, you'll find like a majority a majority of young people are in chamas, mm -hmm. um, and this can be at institutional level. It can be um, at workplace. It can be uh, in neighborhoods, so so it it all depends on um, on what what brings you together. Um, but then on a on a more uh, sad note is um, we still have a large population that is yet to recognize the important the importance of uh, investing investing or the importance of even saving, um, and, and that's. That's usually uh, driven by uh, one or two factors, and one of them is uh, the, the lack of awareness of the uh, the need or the potential of of investing early. Then there is this other bit of um, what they do with their money after saving, right? Which is the biggest question. Which is the biggest question because if you don't, if if, if you're just saving for the sake of saving, you'd rather spend. <laughs> Eugene, do you agree? And the thing is, even within your social circles, um, what do you see? Young, how do you see young people saving if they do even save? There is such a, a small, a small percentage of uh, people uh, amongst my friends and generally amongst the youth, from research, from statistics, and even from just general observation. We have uh, more young people uh, prefer to do fun and uh, to invest in things like uh, lifestyle, fashion, and such, instead of creating a future through savings or investment. So generally, most young people have been uh, are moving towards fun and lifestyle, as opposed to maybe economic development and investment. More young people are moving towards fun which is not a really good thing for the country. All right. So yes. part of the other research that was conducted, it said that um, a number of uh, young people would prefer getting marital advice from their friends as opposed to family. Eugene, do you agree for you as an individual? Yes, because uh, normally You'd rather, uh -huh. when you get advice from family, it might be biased. Sometimes friends tell you uh, the reality of the issue. Isn't advice from friends as well biased to some extent? Some friends are not biased, but uh, it's, it, a greater percentage of family members will be biased. Mm -hmm. They want the, the best for you, but some friends will just tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D does not work. Stephen, what about you? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I think I, I, I totally understand where that is coming from. Yes, if uh, 36% say they'd rather, have, they'd rather get marital advice from friends compared to family members. Yeah, yeah it, goes, it goes to the things that inform uh, marriage decisions from our parents' perspectives. Mm -hmm. And these are things like a tribe, uh, these are things like religion, things, are like, things like, uh, clans. Sometimes it goes to even clans. The, the point is, um, we have a generation that is quite aware of itself. Uh, our young people, uh, are willing to go to that level where they can marry someone from a different tribe, where they, they where they're willing to compromise on re religion, where they're willing to, uh, to even look beyond um, some of the, um, I normally call it the society manual. Mm. They're they willing to go beyond the society manual. And that's why they would rather ask their peers. That's why they would rather ask their friends, because their friends uh, are coming from the same point of thinking. And it goes uh, a step further to look at um, what happens when they get into marriage? Young people at this point, young people at this point, they are looking at uh, at a more flexible way of doing things. Do you it's, think our generation upholds the seriousness of marriage? Um, it's two way, and and and, and this uh, this goes to um, this goes to the, to the, the to the standard way of of, of, of life. 
every generation has its own good and bad people. So if you find one, 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 marriage, uh, one marriage or one young couple that is not able to work through their marriage, that's one of the bad examples. This is also a, 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 big, um, a big chunk of good examples. So, so the point is, let, let there not be uh, some sort of uh, blame game between the older and the, and, and the younger generations. The older saying that marriage these days is not working. No, if, <laughs> if you check quite well, during their time, there are also marriages that didn't work that time. Right. Right. So, um, but, but then there's also, a, 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 there's also that point of uh, patience that we, we might be missing in our, in our, in our current, uh, in our current um, generation, the patience to, uh, to see a family through uh, beyond one, uh, beyond five years, beyond 10 years. Well, uh, th there's a bit of hope because the same research, the 2018 Holler research says that uh, young people still hold the same values with the older generation regarding community, welfare, respect or respect for elders and caring for their extended family. Eugene, you're nodding to this. You agree that yes. our generation I, holds I, the I same values really as the older generation. I really agree. Mm -hmm. uh, we say that approach might not be the same as the old time approach. Okay. We might not be going through the system of uh, you listen to your father, your father brings you a lady and you get married to the lady and then you have so many problems because you never even made the choice in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we have the same seriousness, only that our approach seems to be misguided simply because I am doing what I want to do. I am marrying the person I want to marry. So I will craft that life the way I want it to happen. That means I am ready to bear the consequences of my choices. All right? Yeah which uh, was not the case in the past. So we're just changing the approach from the old customized way to the new, to the new style where I am in charge. Okay. Yes, Stephen, it is just about being in charge. Do you agree that so our seriousness, uh -huh. the seriousness is still there. Do you agree that our generation yes. upholds the same values as the older generation? Um, to some extent, um, yes. And, 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 and I would look at it uh, this way. We value family ties. We value uh, our attachment to communities. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you look at majority of people who volunteer in, in, in community courses, uh, caring for, for, for orphanages, caring for the elderly, um, you'll find it's, it's the young population that is able to, uh, young, I mean, young people who have access to resources uh, or young people who, who are able to mobilize within themselves and do something for, uh, for, for their communities. And, 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 and I think that concern uh, or that societal attachment uh, is, 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 is what, what has... Uh, what has got us here. Right. If you look, if, if honestly we were in a different country, I, I think with the un youth unemployment challenge and uh, the sense of disillusionment that we've had in the, in the larger national space or in, in the larger uh, political space, I think we would be talking of a different, of a different country in terms of uh, radicalization, in terms of uh, um, people not doing what the country would probably be proud of. And, 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 and you can look at it this way. If you look at the NYS scandal, it touches young people. It does. It touches young people. The money that has been stolen belonged to the young people, belonged to, to, uh, to, to the well. It was meant to make their life, lives better. But then um, the fact that it has been stolen and young people are still calm about it, it tells you something about our, bring, our upbringing or our societal fabric, which binds us together. It means there's some, some sense of strength in that. And they're able to, to, to you know, look at this and say, okay, fine, this has happened, but then um, probably we, we need to be a little bit patient or a little bit more patient mm -hmm. and, and see uh, to what level uh, we, can, we can try to be solution providers. Okay, uh, speaking of solution providers, let's look at the last aspect of the research, which touched on the issue of health. Um, for young people, of course, HIV and AIDS, death and cancer is one of their top fears. Yes. HIV and AIDS as well as cancer, which is a health issue, but the same research shows that young people do not have medical insurance. Yes. Eugene? Yes. Uh, once again, I said that young people might be making mistakes out of ignorance. 
out of lack of information, out of uh, probably lack of proper guidance. Most young people fear HIV. You will wonder why most people would uh, freely engage in uh, irresponsible sexual behavior. It is just out of this fallacy of uh, this is fun. I'm just mm. engaging in fun. Okay, that is why most people will not even go for medical insurance because it seems this is just just a liability. Living in the moment. Yes, just a liability. I just need to be free because I can have fun and still uh, make it through. Okay. Otherwise, most people will just have fun, but uh, still fear the consequences. Stephen, before I get your thoughts on that issue, sure. um, interestingly, um, for those who are interviewed with this specific 2018 Holler research, those ones between the ages of 13 to 19 years old, which say 61%, do use protection as a mode of contraceptive. Um, and then 76%, which is between the ages of 26 to 13, say that the, while for them, they prefer injections as a mode of contraception. Um, Stephen, do you think our generation, and like what Eugene has said, is more about living within the moment and not get wondering about, okay, where is my health? Do I have medical insurance? Am I eating right to avoid um, lifestyle diseases such as cancer and so forth? I think it goes back to to the ability to, I, I mean, I mean, ability to access some of these uh, uh, some of these covers. Uh, if you if you look at uh, the standard one like NHIF, right? Um, you need to contribute around around four hundred per month, and. In most cases, you're dealing with a, with a group of uh, young people who are not able to even get food for themselves or put food, food, food on the table on a, on a, on a, on a daily basis. So, so they're living, these are young people who are living a day at a time. And that, that, that speaks to the uh, majority of, uh, of the population. Um, so they would rather put their priorities right and fast, feed themselves now, and think about insurance later. Um, or medical insurance, uh, but then there's also that point of emphasis or awareness that has not been done well. Because if I if if I if if, if someone from NH, NHIF or any other medical insurance uh, service provider was able to articulate or you know unpack unpack medical insurance and say. We are doing this. We are, you are saving this be, in the eventuality that something happens to you. We will be able to cover this amount of cost for you. If, if they are able to do that quite often or uh, do that in a, in a robust way, perhaps uh, we would see even those who are struggling saving or coming up with a model to save. Mm. And this is where I recommend um, some of this insurance or some of the um, so some of these uh, med medical insurance plans need to be devised in a way that they cater f even for that person who wants 10 shillings in a day. Okay. Right? Right. If, 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 uh, if I'm, earning, I'm earning 10 shillings in a day and you tell me that uh, if, uh, if I save five shillings per day, at the end of the month I'll have, Nini, I'll have contributed around 150 shillings. Mm. You, you see, so, so for me, I would, be, I would be so comfortable with that. So it goes to even the way we structure some of these things. We standardize too much. Right. Forgetting that we are not on a level ground. The inequality levels are quite high. Uh, we... We're in a country where someone earns 10 million in a day and another one barely gets even five shillings in a yeah. day. So the so, inequality so makes the, it a bit the, difficult. The, the, the inequality makes it difficult. And it's, it's necessary even for the, uh, for the policy makers or, the, um, or, or, or people who've been bestowed upon the responsibility to divide some of these plans All right. to look at uh, some of these basic issues. And that's why we have the county governments. Right. If every county government was to find a way of domesticating um, medical insurance covers, or uh, I mean medical medical insurance plans, or any other health um, 
health investment plan for families within their or within their counties. Things would be a bit better. Things would be a bit better, and right. and I think that was the that was the vision or that was some of some some of the aspirations okay. of devolution. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Stephen Chow, who is a digital strategist, strategist, as well as Eugene Eugenie, who is a former Moy University lead and the author of Master Your Destiny, just helping us undergo that research that was conducted by the 2018 Holland. Now, before we take a quick commercial break, we just want to bring you a quick update of um, what's currently happening in Huruma. If you're just joining us, those are live images on your screens where at least two people have been confirmed dead after a five-story building collapsed last night. NYS, as well as the Kenya Red Cross, have been on the ground trying as much as possible to continue with oper um, rescue operations. As much as we know that two people have been confirmed dead and three others are in hospital, we're still not sure how many people are still stuck and if they are stuck under those rebels. Those are live images from Huruma as rescue operations are still underway. When we come back from this short commercial break, we will cross over and talk to our reporter Caroline B, who has more details for us. But that is after this break, so stay with us.